Hello everybody, this is Matt Bergman and I want to share with you how to set up a live buy. Step one, you want to make sure that you sign up for an account or you log in. You'll be redirected to a dashboard that by default goes to all of your binders. To create a binder, you go to start a blank binder. You'll be prompted to type in information about the name of your binder, the description, the tags, and whether you want it public or private. So I type in sample and then description, which is required. You don't have to put in a tag. And if you want it private, you can set up an access key or a password to password protect it, or you can set it up as public. Doesn't matter. I'm going to set mine up as public. And you can set a category as well. So I'll choose education. When you're ready, click create new binder. In live binders, you'll notice that these are tabs, sort of like in a notebook at school that you used where you put in science, math, or reading. I can rename those tabs by simply clicking on them and then erasing this text. I'm going to make mine called UDL. Let's say that I want people to access my live binder and go to the UDL Center website. I can put in any website web address into a binder and it'll allow you to access that. You can even go to the site directly right here. Now another thing that you should know about live binders is that there may be instances where you have UDL resources and just like papers in a notebook you want to file them in this this particular tab. You want to add some extra resources. So if you look at this triangle that's pointing down, this will allow you to create what are called subtabs. Now subtabs are different things that you can add underneath this category. So for instance, maybe I want to have a link to something about representation. So I can quickly paste my link to the UDL principle number one right here. But you're not just limited to web pages. If you want to create another sub tab right here, I'll just create a sub tab, you can. Notice that every time you go to a tab, your subtabs disappear underneath the UDL tab, and then they reappear when you visit them. If you click on different subtabs, you'll get to see your different items that you put in your folder. Now, I may want to put a picture right here. If you want to add something other than a website, if you go to add content, you'll have a variety of things that you can choose from. You can upload a file. You can upload other content, such as Flickr, YouTube, QR codes, Dropbox files, delicious files, and other binders. You can also set up the layout of how text appears. So for instance, let's say instead of having just my picture, I want to have some text as well. Maybe what I do is I choose text and media. I can go ahead and close it out of that. And I can start typing in text right here. Let me type in options for symbols and expressions. I can change the format of this as well, which is going here and changing the font size, changing its position. And I could even add a little bit of information right here. So, check out this picture. When I'm ready to add my picture, I can insert it by simply clicking on Add Content. And I will upload a file. And I will choose a picture that I have on my computer, which is on my desktop. Then I can open it, click Upload, And there's my picture. You can simply close out of this. Here it is. Now this picture is rather big, so I may want to check out um, maybe shrinking it a little bit, or I may want to try to change the actual layout of my tab. If you'll notice, when any time that you load something, you may want to change this right here, this sub tab name, and change it to options or symbols. If I want to move this sub tab, I can move it to the left. 
if I want to um, add a new sub tab, I can add a new sub tab. I can upload any type of document at, at all. So for instance, let's say that I had a tab called directions right here. I can click on add content. I can choose a file from a location on my computer. And let's say that I want to do it from my desktop. And let's see right here. Let's, I'll just add in a PDF file right here. I'll click upload. What it'll do is it'll upload my particular PDF file. If you have a Word document or a PowerPoint document, you won't be able to see it directly here. You'll have to download it first. If you have a PDF file, you can then scroll through that actual document, which is great for directions. Something else that might be helpful with your kids is color coding the tabs or changing the tabs. So if you go up to tab settings and you change the color of your tab, change it to orange, you can do that. You know, notice it changes it to orange. Another thing that you can do too is if you don't like the tabs above, you can choose side tabs. And if you click preview, this is what your binder is going to look like right here when you do this. The big and most important thing that you want to make sure that you do is that you always, always, always hit save. So when I hit save, that I'll do that. Sharing my binder is pretty easy. If I share it, I can do one of several things. I can save it and share it on social media. I can email it or I have a link that I can share with my students if I need to. So here's the actual binder link right here. What I would recommend doing is either putting this on a website, putting it in a Word document, or using a URL shortener like tinyurl.com to help students be able to access that. So when students see your live binder, this is what they'll see. You can go to view and present and it gets rid of all the other junk that you wouldn't, you don't want to worry about. You can go and see each picture. They can scroll through this. They can see the directions. They can even download those directions too as a PDF file. They can go to the representation section right here. And then you have your other tabs as well.